fashion video. This week, it's the second Sunday of the month and I will be recreating some stylish looks that I fell in love with on the World Wide Web. Uh, and I'm gonna recreate them using what I already have in my closet because this is such a great exercise uh, to remind us that usually we already have what we need in our closets uh, and it just helps get our creative juices flowing. So for those of you who are new, welcome. Every week I talk about slow fashion with a focus on using what you already have and shopping your closet. So if that sounds like your jam, hit subscribe below. I post every Sunday. And for those of you who are coming back, Big hello and welcome back to you. Thank you so, so much for coming back and watching. So let's jump right in. I chose two very fall transitional looks from two of my uh, favorite bloggers. I just love their style and two very different looks as well. So I hope you like them. Starting off with Ami Song of Song of si Style. She is one of the like OG bloggers. I really loved this look because it was a little bit edgy, but it's got this beautiful flowy skirt. Before jumping into my closet and figuring out how to recreate this, I try to break down the look into elements that have absolutely nothing to do with what she's wearing so that it helps me not to focus on a specific piece that I likely don't have in my closet. Instead, breaking it down into style elements allows me to use what I already have and create something hopefully similar. So the first thing that I look at is just what is the overall style vibe that she's giving off here? How do I want the clothes that I choose to make me feel when I put this outfit together? And Ami Song's style in general is edgy, so this look goes right along with that. But I'm also going to say it's a little eclectic as well because of the mix of prints and textures paired with these like glam sunglasses and, and hoop earrings. The next thing that I look at are the silhouette and proportions of the look. From a proportion perspective, this is a very well balanced look. She's got a little bit of volume on top and volume all the way down with the flow of her skirt. In terms of the silhouette though, it's not too voluminous because she's cinching it at the waist with that big wide belt. So the silhouette is still very clean and sleek and minimalistic. The final piece that I look at are the styling hacks. And styling hacks have everything to do with how she's tucked or cuffed or mixed her prints and colors and absolutely nothing to do with the exact pieces that she's wearing. So I really think this is where the magic happens. The first styling hack that I can identify here is the monochromatic color scheme. She's really kept the look neutral. It's still all working within the same palette, that kind of oatmeal sandy color. She's also playing with a whole bunch of textures in this look which makes it a lot of fun. Another styling hack that she's using to kind of create a little bit of tension with this beautiful monochromatic scheme is using bold accessories to create a more interesting look. So she's got these big black heavy glasses paired with a nice soft palette and a darker belt which does its job cinching her waist simply because it's a belt, but brings our focus even more so on a small waist and creating a flattering silhouette because of the color, because it's darker than everything else that she's wearing. Final styling hack that she's done, which can often be overlooked, is that she's pushed the sleeves up on her sweater. And I think this is so helpful, especially as we move into these more voluminous, heavier sweaters for fall and winter. Rolling up the sleeves and pushing them up really adds a little bit of polish and uh, makes us feel a little bit more put together. When it comes to my closet, I know for sure I'm gonna have to leave the palette, the color palette behind because I don't own a snake skin print skirt. Instead of seeking out a midi skirt that has a slit right up to here, I'm gonna try and create my own by layering over top of this dress. Uh, no, <laughs> the palette, like I said, is going to be totally off. It's not even an animal print. Uh, this is like an arbitrary, very 70s inspired print that I still really like. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this dress uh, and make sure that I unbutton it quite high. In fact, dare I say a little scandalously high, but I love that. I think that's what makes the look and gives it that whole edgy, a little bit even sexy vibe. I'm gonna add my cream Savat de Soie sweater. My look is gonna be a little bit based more on contrasting. There's still some 
nice cream in the dress so these are still going to pair really nicely together and I chose a sweater that would be heavy enough to kind of cover the dress without feeling too bulky like it's got a, a little bit of room next I'm gonna need a belt to cinch in that waist okay so I found excuse me this belt it's ancient I don't even know where it came from I'm gonna add this bag even though we can't see hers these are pretty close in color so I'm gonna use those two now for boots, I have nothing like those boots that she have on and they are pretty awesome. But I do have these incredibly ancient fry boots. And I think they'll still work because the color is still going in my kind of cognac -y brown color scheme. The only problem is that the heel is chunkier, so I'm really losing that whole sexy, kind of edgy vibe and going a little bit more into casual territory, but I'm gonna work with what I have. Life is not perfect, so our outfits should not expect it to be either. I mean, we already have so many things to be frustrated and worried about in life. Uh, why make your outfit one of those things? And how could I forget? The sunnies and the earrings. So for the earrings, I've got my Ana Luisa silver hoops. I don't know if this is focusing. These are pretty fabulous. Oh, and she's also got a necklace uh, that is pretty substantial. One moment. Now I'm getting like a bit distracted. Sunnies, my simple and very classic Dior. They're not as kind of hard edged as hers, but they're black, they're solid. They're gonna do the job. Now that necklace, mm. I'm gonna use my kind of relatively large pendant necklace from Ana Luisa, and I'm just going to shorten the chain. It's very minimal and sleek. So if we're breaking apart this look, the genre I think is just very chic and timeless. It also looks a little bit feminine. Now breaking down the silhouette and proportions, it's very similar to our last look because everything has a lot of balance and harmony. She's got a nice long pant, long sleeve sweater, both of which offer a little bit more of a fitted silhouette. So the pants are nice and tight with a little bit of a kick flare at the bottom, and the sweater isn't too tight or too loose. When it comes to styling hacks, this is again a very simple look. She's really letting the garments do the talking. And this brings me to the first styling hack, which is probably the most obvious, and that is using a monochrome palette as her base. But what makes this outfit so cool is the pops of black in her boots and in her purse. And I think that's really what brings a little bit of edge to this look. And she's also wearing her bag in the crook of her arm, which also allows this look to be a little bit more feminine. I also think the fact that she's kept everything else really minimal was smart because then it's really not taking away from that super sharp contrast in the boot. So jumping into my closet, uh, let's see what we can do here. I'm going to first start with the monochrome base and since my closet is a bit similar to Anna's in the sense that we both have a lot of neutrals, um, I'm gonna grab my Everlane chinos. They don't have as much of a kick flare as Anna's pants, but they're nice and straight and sleek. I do think, however, that uh, they're not as tight as the ones that we're trying to replicate. I'm gonna use my uh, Cezanne sweater that I found secondhand on Best Chair Collective. I think what might throw this look off a bit is the texture in the sleeves. It's got like a little bit of a crocheted effect and it's uh, really, really fuzzy. So I'm, I'm throwing off that, that nice sleek look by adding a little bit of interesting texture in there, but that's okay. I'm also gonna wear it uh, backwards so that the neckline is higher. For footwear, I definitely have a pair of black booties, but hers are a little bit more current, and so the ankle is higher. This is what we're seeing more of now, whereas my booties that I think I'm gonna use... 
They're a bit shorter on the ankle, so they don't go as high. But what I'm gonna do to make sure that I keep that nice black line going up under the pants, which is what she's doing, um, I'm just gonna add a pair of black trouser socks. And I have to say, uh, when it comes to fall dressing, I feel like like little nice trouser socks are so underutilized. I love like a cool ankle trouser with a sock and a great shoe. I think it's just so chic and elegant and a little bit menswear inspired and I feel like we do not use these enough. Anyway, okay, mini sock rant over. Now, as always, my problem is the bag. But anyway, I don't have one that I can wear in the crook of my arm. Okay, so I have <laughs> my, another great secondhand find actually, uh, my coach saddle bag, which, I, I don't think, like, I can try and finagle something here with the handle. I mean, I could tie a knot in it and wear it this way, but I think that just looks weird. I think what I'm going to have to do is just wear this bag the most ladylike way possible uh, and just wear it over my shoulder like this. learn something new hit subscribe if you haven't already i hope you have a wonderful week ahead and uh thank you so so much for watching have a great week i think i already said that ciao